March 1st, 2022, St. Petersburg, Russia. We just arrived here. It's like the only uh, ATM in the entire city that's available. We got screamed at by the guards telling us that there's no money in the ATM or that we should leave immediately. Yeah, bro, this is what it is, you know, bringing back the Soviet Union. Hey, everybody, it is your boy Roman, and I guess, guys, now, uh, with everything that's going on in the walls, you can officially call me Harry and Bankrupts. It's official now, guys. The Russian economy <laughs> is done, and so am I, you know? I'm going down with it. Yes, in this video, I'm gonna- I mean, he can't even make money off this, right? Like, like he, he can't- even if there were ads on this YouTube video, like, YouTube will literally not pay him uh, the AdSense money. Currently, with the way that sanctions work, we're talking about the overall sanctions on Russia right now, the state of the Russian economy, how people are reacting to this, what's going on. And I've actually received a lot of comments and DMs on Instagram of people saying that, like, basically, people saying that I only care about money and my own well being, like, I don't care about people in Ukraine or whatever. Again, I totally understand why people might be annoyed with me, but I don't really know if there's really anything else I can do. I've made my position very clear and very vocal. Dog, it doesn't matter they they just they hate you okay that's just you know they hate you because they ain't you i don't know how else to describe it this kind of attitude towards like average russians is so so insanely fucked up azan loves this guy now no i mean he already fucking said this is soviet russia i don't give a fuck about his personal point of view i don't even give a fuck about his like political perspective ultimately it just sucks because it is the the unfortunate reality of sanctions. This is the other side of the fucking sanctions. Same hair. Yeah, that too. It's such a weird thing also to see. It's such a weird thing to, to see people celebrate, um, you know, fuck these people like they're at fault. Like they, they have no say in this, you know, they have no fucking say in this whatsoever. What do you want? And this channel has always been about my daily life in Russia and just lives of regular Russians and what it's like to be in Russia So I think it's only right if I make this video to talk about how Western sanctions and also Russian counter sanctions affect me right now in Russia Because I'm really fucking concerned and I'm, I'm completely fucked basically I'm fucked also guys one thing I want to say before we get into this is that in the current situation the future of uh, Western social media in Russia is very uncertain I actually would not be surprised if like YouTube or Instagram or whatever actually get blocked so i made a telegram channel roman underscore no fuckers go and follow it i post updates there so yeah if you want to keep up with me follow it just in case but now let's get into the video so the sanctions these are really bad i mean honestly the russian economy isn't that the whole point of sanctions to put pressure on the populace to effect change from within yeah but it doesn't fucking matter if one the country that you're trying to implement sanctions on is already an economic powerhouse and two the country that you're trying to implement sanctions on is already powerful enough to withstand or or sorry uh, uh, it does not care about the fucking safety and security of its own citizens. So, and the only time sanctions do end up fucking working is, uh, is in instances where countries are powerless in general, and they don't even fucking work to uh, create a revolt. If anything, it just makes the leader in control of that country more fucking aggressive and authoritarian. They take authoritarian measures to, to squash any sort of fucking protest that comes as a consequence of those sanctions. Times when a sanction will work is like, people are saying South Africa, right? Yeah, our ally. It works if, it, the only place where a sanction can work is not if it's a foreign adversary, but if it's a fucking ally. That's why I always say like, sanctions could work on Israel. Sanctions could work on Saudi Arabia. Sanctions can work on American uh, uh, American allies that are doing brutal and awful things. Sanctions are not usually going to work on, on a country like uh, Russia because, one, Putin doesn't really give a shit about his perspective. Uh, you know, he doesn't really give a shit about what happens to his citizens, it seems. And also, he has enough power, like he currently is flexing currently, to uh, be able to withstand the, the uh, sanctions. Like, people saying, I think sanctions might cause Russian people to overthrow, uh, try to overthrow Putin, but I don't know. It can go either way. And by the way, I do totally understand. He said he's fucked up. How are sanctions not working again? Dog, he's a perfect example of why sanctions fucking are really stupid in this situation, but there's nothing else that you can do, so I get the other side of this argument as well. That's why I'm saying, like, it's, not, it's a little bit more complicated than just being like, this is good and this is bad. He already was a fucking anti-Putin Russian guy. What changed? The only thing that changed in his life is that uh, he, he, it's just shittier now. He's fucked. 
economy is in shambles right now and um look it's really hard because um i feel like for the majority of the time like before when sanctions were imposed on russia the majority of them were imposed to like harm the elites right now the sanctions are very much there to you know cripple the russian economy as a whole and also to make the average russian suffer should i say and uh, i guess the overall thought process of the western countries is that like if people in russia really get it hard then they might actually you know rebel or whatever but i don't really think that's gonna happen honestly and also because the sanctions that are imposed right now in Russia, I mean, these pretty much harm the average person. Now, honestly, I'm not gonna try to give you guys like a complete list of what happens. I'm gonna, I guess, pinpoint the main ones, kind of describe what that does to me and the average Russian. But yeah, guys, I mean, at this point, it's really hard to keep keep up with this. You know, when you, like every single hour I open the news and I see that some new sanction has been imposed, some new company stopped working in Russia, some new service decided to shut down its operations in Russia. And at this point, like, yeah. People who were pro-Putin before are aren't going to blame him for the sanctions now they're going to blame the west and see russia as the victim of international community turning against them and people who are anti-putin are already anti-putin and now they're anti-putin and also on top of that getting fucked by the sanctions also apartheid was deeply unpopular at that stage sanctions pushed the mp government over the edge it did because economic deviation though and as devastation you mean as well as capitalist country it affected the poorest the most but south africa is the best case scenario for sanctions which is not a very solid pro sanctions argument let alone like a successful uh successful uh, in insurrection or insurgent movement within the country as well on top of the sanctions that most americans at the time would have considered terrorism and did actually famously consider terrorism and uh would definitely consider terrorism if it were to happen in the united states of america oh wait similar things did happen in the united states of america uh the black panther party uh and uh, you know people still uh, throughout american history consider them to be terrorists as well so but once again, the sanctions itself become a finger wagging operation that ends up harming, uh, you know, it, it makes it seem like we're doing something because there's not really much you can do because Russia is a nuclear superpower, right? Because so you can't engage in military action because that would mean world war. Okay. But you can do sanctions like full blown nuclear option level sanctions, which still has like some carve outs for pre existing energy uh, agreements that they have. And then also on top of that, we saw in the UK carve outs for specific oligarchs that, you know, command a significant portion or have a significant portion of British interests, for example. Russians suffer from sanctions. Ukrainian civilians are dying at the moment. No, I, I, I understand that. I'm. You live and work in a country with shit leaders, you pay the price, is such a fucking disgusting take. Because these people have no say in the matter. He didn't pick to fucking be Russian. I don't know. I just... But I, I, but I get the other side of the argument, too. It's like, what are you supposed to do? You can't do anything. You can't, like, continue to fucking trade with Russia and allow them to uh, fund their war efforts. You're directly funding... Even when you're doing, uh, even when you're currently engaging in energy uh, trades, energy agreements, you're still helping Russia fund its fucking war effort. You know what I mean? So the the alternative in the situation is like sanctions also have to come with a. I feel like sanctions also have to come with a time limit, which kind of eliminates the purpose of sanctions because then you can, you know, um, reshape your economy uh, against the specific time limit. But at the very least, like an end point which is hey sanctions will end the moment that you decide to uh agree to a terms of a ceasefire americans would never support the same against their country even though their government deserves it the most exactly sanctions are an act of collective punishment but because western nations are the ones that have the power to be able to enact sanctions they are the ones who have written the rules and therefore they are the ones who are able to do collective punishment in any other circumstance you would consider that to be an act of war you would consider that to be unjustifiable but because america gets to do it uh it doesn't matter it's disproportionately felt by average citizens just average citizens who will suffer the consequences of said sanctions they can work if they're done towards allied nations which rely on our financial and material support that's why i say like if nations are aligned almost entirely with the united states a sanction would be successful in stopping their initiatives even even before you hit a sanction actually all you need to do is shut off the faucet like for israel for example or saudi arabia for example that would 1000 percent put a immediate fucking break 
on on uh, the actions that Saudi Arabia is engaging in Yemen or the actions that Israel is engaging in in Palestinian territories. But we will never do that, of course. So that's uh, besides the point because those guys are doing the right thing. And uh, those are not bad guys, but instead good guys doing the good thing because they're our allies. In some parts of the United States, boycotting Israel is literally illegal. Yes, yes. In most of the red states where they love freedom of speech and freedom of expression and pre freedom to be able to uh, protest, uh, in, in all of those states, free speech and the First Amendment just means you should be able to say the N-word without any repercussions and nothing else. Those are the same states where you have to literally fucking sign uh, a, a pledge of allegiance to, uh, to Israel and state that you will never join BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, to, to be able to fucking teach at a public school. Like, that's literally what you have to do in Arizona. You have to do that in Texas and all these fucking places where those yee-yee boys who are like, yeah, fuck yeah, we love free speech, baby, will literally be like, you can't even fucking protest against Israel if you want to, be a, uh, if you want to work with the state government. I get it. Nobody fucking likes us. Anyway, the sanctions are as harsh as they could have been, I guess. I mean, Russia got cut off some, from SWIFT, which is already an issue for me. Uh, basically, long story short, if we're talking about me right now, like, I'm not, be I'm, I'm not able to get paid at all right now. From YouTube and from Patreon, guys, I can... How come you don't say none about the black people in Ukraine? I've said something about uh, African refugees in Ukraine every single day. Every single day. So far, I covered it today as well. Not get paid. I've gotten a lot of Patreon donations from you guys, you know, trying to support me and everything. But I think it's going to be a while before I'm able to withdraw that fun those funds. You know, I have like a registered business account in Russia. I pay taxes and everything. And both of the banks that I had my business accounts in are sanctioned and are cut off from Swift. I cannot make money on either of them right now. It's either, you know, I try to make a new bank account. But also the problem is that even if I make a new bank account, like a bank account in a bank that has not been sanctioned yet, nobody can guarantee that those banks wouldn't be cut off from swift either so yeah right now guys i mean i'm not like starving or anything i have savings which are burning down every second because uh well it seems like having dollars in russia right now is not even safe anymore because you know i thought i'm like a smart guy because i had a lot of my money in usd as opposed to rubles and i was like well if the economy crashes i'm gonna be sort of fine anyway but uh right now it doesn't really seem like uh having dollars in your bank account is even safe because banks are running the fuck out of foreign currency we just arrived here at the only ATM of uh, the greatest bank in Russia, Tinkoff. Actually a pretty good bank to be honest, but not in the state of the economy currently. If you go online right now and look at the ATM map of that particular bank, and I got some money in it, it's like the only uh, ATM in the entire city that's available. And it's said that it had dollars, euros, and some rubles, like 300,000 which is going to be worth like two dollars by tomorrow anyway but yeah this is it uh there was like a huge line in the back we got told that it does feel like a necessary evil in this situation i get it um like i i it's not something that i can give like a 100 percent uh like this is a 100 percent absolutely not like uh attitude on um it just doesn't i don't think it's like actually harming the people that it's supposed to though but what are you supposed to do? There's nothing else. The only other thing you can do in this situation, you have to try to cripple, you have to let Russia suffer in some way, right? Like in, in any way, you have, to, you have to try and do something, anything, right? But the idea that like people are going to revolt and, uh, and all this shit, like it's not going to, I don't think it's going to materialize. <sighs> it's not going to stop. Uh, it's not stopping Russia from invading. The only way I can justify something like this is if you also pair that up with a forcible ceasefire uh, conversation. Russia wants to have ceasefire conversations at the barrel of a gun with Ukraine. We all know that the main actor in this, in this conflict, one could put an end to all of this bloodshed, is after Russia, of course, is the United States of America. If both sides can make concessions on, on a fucking peaceful agreement towards neutralizing Ukraine, which, of course, no matter what happens going forward, is going to fucking despise Russia anyway. So that's like in America's strategic interest to uh, ensure Ukraine is at least on paper neutralized. They'll still fucking uh, despise Russia. Don't worry. And they'll still be a strategic asset for you. Don't fucking worry going forward and forever. 
Um, I feel like that's having ceasefire negotiations by definition done at the barrel of a gun. That's why they call ceasefire. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. America is like pointing an economic gun at Russia while uh, Russia is pointing a literal gun at uh, Ukraine. And no, I do not think it's too late for that. I do not think it'll ever be too late for that. There is no, that's, that's how wars end. There is no, there's no way in which uh, there is like a total militarily defeat. <laughs> that's fucked up, but funny. Like Zoink Scoop, this doesn't feel like a military exercise. <laughs> Yo, that is kind of fun. This is the first meme I've seen that's kind of funny about. Isn't the whole point of this war for Ukraine deciding its own fate and not the US or Russia? Dog, what do you think is going to happen? Ukraine wants, as a part of its own fate, as a part of its own destiny, for uh, fucking NATO to intervene. That's never going to happen. So what do you mean? Why is Ukraine asking for NATO support? Why, where would Ukraine be without NATO guns? It would be nowhere. Where would Ukraine be without NATO training? Why does Ukraine want to be a part of NATO? Because without NATO and without Western superpowers helping Ukraine, they would get fucking, they would have gotten rolled way harder than they did in 2014. That's a crazy fucking take to act like the, the, the Western powers have no say in this process. When the, the, the reason why we're having a conversation even about sanctions is not because Ukraine sanctioned Russia. It's because Western powers are sanctioning Russia. They should be. I feel like we've abandoned them. The abandonment was going to happen from day one. That's what I've been trying to fucking say. Joe Biden has been saying for months, of course, we're not going to send American troops there. Of course, we're not going to send American troops there. And the reason for why we were not going to send American troops there is because that would mean World War III. That would mean a nuclear superpower and another nuclear superpower fighting each other which is, you know, nuclear holocaust. But a neutral Ukraine is something that simply cannot exist, like 0% survival chance. And even if that is the case, even if neutralization of Ukraine is not something that you can even do, so you're saying that without NATO, Ukraine wouldn't have been able to resist this successfully? There's two arguments here. Of course, without NATO, Ukraine wouldn't have been able to resist this successfully, which legitimizes NATO, right? I get that. Certainly. Vladimir Putin is legitimizing the the reason the stated reason for why nato exists right by behaving this way by doing this exactly this but what you also have to recognize what you also have to understand is and i this is my analysis from before vladimir putin invaded and because he's uh, behaving in this like super erratic and super psychotic fucking way i don't even know if it's a it's it's something that we can know to be true anymore what I'm about to say, but without NATO, there's no reason for uh, Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine unless you legitimately believe that he wants to, he's like Duganist, he wants to invade everybody, he wants to, uh, he wants to maintain territorial control, and that's the ultimate goal here, and if he hadn't invaded Ukraine, I would disagree with you vehemently, but now that he has invaded Ukraine, I don't know, and not invading Ukraine in the same way as like Crimea, but in full-blown invading Ukraine, because this is even more than what happened in Georgia. Okay, this is an act of aggression that goes beyond what happened in Georgia, the stated interests of Georgia, the stated interests of what uh, he claimed was happening in Georgia, and Georgia, which is a much, much smaller country than Ukraine, uh, of course. But there is a reason why uh, there is a reason why he didn't do this to Finland. There is a reason why he didn't do this to Ukraine for a very, very long time, and there is a reason why he didn't do this to Georgia for a very long time as well. My belief is similar to Mersheimer's, where it comes from. The, the threat of Georgia and Ukraine uh, joining NATO, which was seen as a red line by Vladimir Putin and was seen as a re uh, red line by a, fuck Vladimir Putin, but a sovereign territorial power that did not want NATO expansion into these two neighboring regions, into these two neighboring countries. That was his purpose. Except, of course, is a chicken of the egg situation where it does justify the existence of NATO. He's invading to put a public government in control. Our government just told him to fuck off. Therefore, he started an invasion. NATO doesn't matter. I do think that uh, I do think that a, a puppet government, like an installation of an un, uh, unfavorable, unpopular puppet government going forward, especially, is never going to be acceptable. It, it's never going to be even remotely acceptable. It's just not. It, it's it's a wrap. But no matter what happens, the only way to move forward from here 
The only way to try to, at the very least, exhaust all fucking options is not by, like, putting $1 million bounties on Putin's head. Is not by fucking sanctions that don't actually also lead to some kind of concession and some kind of peace treaty. Because there's only two ways this ends. You fucking try to wipe out as much as you can of Ukraine and try to crush them, kill their civilian population, do unjustifiable unjustifiable completely unjustifiable things that are even beyond the pale right now from where you're standing because what we're looking at right now is is uh what's going on in ukraine is is horrific right it can get so much fucking worse and it would get so much fucking worse either vladimir putin just fucking rolls over ukraine and is like carpet bombing and then puts installs like some a puppet leader and then uh, and then they are doing a continued uh, they're doing continued counterinsurgency in the country over and over again forever in perpetuity and uh this country already now has a fuckload of guns fuckload of weapons or there's some kind of negotiation at the end of all this where there is uh there's something uh that is a semblance of a neutralization agreement because if it's not ethnic cleansing like what is the alternative that the, the Ukrainian military with all the weapons that they've gotten from the Ukrainian military with all the weapons that they've gotten from NATO countries is going to be able to fucking defeat uh, Russia militarily. I, I don't think so, but maybe, maybe it'll happen. I, I hope, but it doesn't seem likely. Hillary Clinton talked about uh, Afghanistan the other night on MSNBC, where she said, Afghanistan is where USSR died because it was a long and fucking uh, endless a bloody battle for the USSR, which could not deal with an insurgency who got weapons from us and Western allies. That's what she said. Now, of course, that's a, a lot of irony there. Uh, here, I'll just show you the actual video. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you the actual video here. Trigger warning, Hillary Clinton. Uh, the Russians invaded Afghanistan uh, back uh, in 1980. And uh, although no country uh, went in, uh, they certainly had a lot of countries uh, supplying uh, arms and advice and even some advisors uh, to those who were recruited to fight Russia. It didn't end well for the Russians. Uh, there were other uh, unintended consequences, as we know, but the fact is that a very motivated and then uh, funded and armed uh, insurgency uh, basically drove the Russians out of Afghanistan. Um, obviously, the similarities are, are not uh, ones that you should uh, bank on, because uh, the terrain, the development uh, in urban areas, et cetera, is so different. But I think that is the model that people are now uh, looking toward. And if there can be sufficient uh, armaments that get in, and they should be able to get in along some of uh, uh, the borders. Uh Bro, some of y'all will literally say anything in the chat. I saw someone say, yo, Hillary's looking fine as fuck. Someone in the chat unironically said, damn, Hillary's looking fine as fuck. You need to find God, okay? You understand me? You need to find God. Down horrendous, dude. Down worse than that fucking Texas uh, congressperson who, who literally risked it all for the ISIS bride. God damn. Okay, listen. Here's, here's what I have to say. First of all, Hillary Clinton talking about this is fucking hilarious. Um, secondly... Secondly, what the fuck happened in Afghanistan? And then what happened? You know, the USSR invasion, first of all, is not a direct comparison because, like, while the Ukrainian government is aligned with the West, it's not like the West fucking invaded Ukraine or America invaded Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine. USSR went into Afghanistan at the behest of the communist government. And there's a bit of that story that she is uh, not telling. I don't know if it's on purpose or maybe she is unaware of it. Probably a bit of both. Which is our actions gearing up in Afghanistan and, and creating, which, and there was legitimate interest uh, from the population regardless because the communist government was doing a fucking horrific, horrific job.
and 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 was very brutally suppressing Islam and and de -Islam, de Islamizing. I don't know what the fucking uh, the 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 uh, point would be. Uh, parts of Afghanistan that should not have that should have never happened. Even the USSR's own analysts uh, thought that that was a fucking horrible idea. Part of the reason why they wanted to fucking overthrow the current uh, communist government of Afghanistan at the time. Anyway, I'm getting into like super fucking. Uh, 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 complicated history here, but I love that she glanced over the additional consequences of, of, of Russia going into Afghanistan. But one thing that I find rather strange here is one, America's involvement, of course, in the lead up to uh, reactionary forces like blowing up, uh, you know, areas in Kabul and shit like that are with our help and with our uh, fucking goading. And two, do you want Ukraine to turn into Afghanistan? Like, that's not good for the people. If you ask the people in fucking Afghanistan, I'm pretty sure they're not super happy about the current situation there. It is deeply selfish for us to be like, yeah, what we should do now is a 20-year fucking uh, insurgency campaign in, in Ukraine. Hey, guess what? Ukrainians, like, you know, Slava Ukraine, we're with you. We stand with you. Uh, have fun with a fucking 20-year military uh Counter, uh, 20 year insurgency campaign against a, a brutal occupying force. Have fun with that. What kind of consequences will that fucking have for the country? What kind of consequences will that have with it for, its, for the citizens there? Like, just no, no concern for this whatsoever. As the supposed global police superpower that we believe America is, we never fucking use our might and our military and our economic power for any kind of fucking good. We never adjudicate in a, in a positive capacity. We are seeing the demise of Ukraine as nothing but a strategic position to, to fucking cripple our foreign adversary. We have the power to put an end to this. We have a power to put an end to all of the fucking evil wrongdoings on this planet. But we won't. Uh, between other nations and Ukraine. Uh, and keep the Ukrainian, uh, both their military and their citizen uh, volunteer soldiers supplied. Uh, that can continue to stymie Russia. Now, let's be, you know, clear that Russia has overwhelming uh, military force. Uh, but, of course, they did in Afghanistan as well. Mm. Uh, they also brought a lot of uh, air power to Syria. It has—it took years to finally uh, defeat Syria. Uh, in terms of the insurgencies, the democratic forces, as well as others who battled the Russians, the Syrians, and the Iranians. Um, so if you're fighting for your homeland, you're fighting for your family, you're fighting for your ideals, that's far more powerful than sending in these poor, young Russian soldiers who didn't even know where they were going until they crossed the border and people were screaming at them, and they realized they were in Ukraine. So I, I think we have to watch this carefully. We have to provide sufficient uh, military armaments for the Ukraine uh, military and volunteers, and we have to keep tightening the screws. I don't have a problem with fucking arming Ukraine as long as, as, long as we're not presenting them with a fucking false hope that they can defeat Russia without taking on significant amounts of fucking human casualties. And we are goading Ukraine, just like dangling NATO membership in front of Ukraine when it was never going to happen. We are goading Ukraine into extending the fucking conflict. Everybody now, of course, as a consequence of fucking Russia behaving in the way that it did, is now under the firm suspicion and firm belief that like they are trying to do the Russian empire. They are trying to do the Russian Empire. They're going to do the Russian Empire. So there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do but just fucking what? Throw Ukrainian bodies? There's Throw Ukrainian bodies at the problem? You know? They're just, there's no other way. There's no other way out uh, uh, around this. You played the clip. What do you mean? What clip? What should the U.S. do? Call, to, call a fucking cease, uh, call a ceasefire. But they're willing, dude, give them a chance to fight back. The West wants Ukrainians to fight on uh, fight Russia on behalf of their 20 plus years. The West does not care about Ukrainian deaths. And Ukrainians want to fucking probably fight for 20 plus years. There are probably plenty of fucking Ukrainians who are like, yeah, we'll fight for as long as it takes. But it does not matter. It doesn't matter. The escalation in this situation is the best way to avoid further casualties.
Y'all realize you're talking about people dying? Exactly. Exa I do realize that. So what is the solution? Putin will not go for a ceasefire at this point? Dude, the, I think that Putin calling in a ceasefire with Zelensky is entirely different than America agreeing to a genuine ceasefire. And even if it doesn't work, right? Even if that ceasefire agreement does not fucking work, right? Then what do you do? Then it's back to fucking square one. Okay? Do you understand? So it, it's not... It's like, it's a win-win, I guess. And not even a win-win, but like, there is no reason not to try it. Do you understand what I mean? Because if Putin's going to fucking Putin and he truly wants to restore the, the Russian empire, then, Hassan, you are naive to think Putin could ever accept the laws? No, dude. It's not naivete in this situation. It's exhausting every fucking option. And if you don't trust, you're, you're sounding pretty not cool right now. And if you don't fucking trust Putin, and I totally understand why you wouldn't, obviously why the fuck would you he's literally bombing the shit out of ukraine right now then nothing changed from yesterday to today do you understand the only thing is you tried you tried you tried your best i personally don't think ukraine will lead to world war three what would what would is the collapse of russia what would lead to war for control over territory installing governments by both nato and china why do you people keep saying read the tweet remember the Russians invaded Afghanistan back in 1980, Hillary Clinton says. It didn't end well for the Russians, but, in, but the fact is that a very motivated and then funded and armed insurgency basically drove the Russians out of Afghanistan. Yeah, and then what did they do? What did that armed insurgency end up doing? You know, there's a reason why, like, British press was writing about fucking Osama bin Laden as, like, the great uh, anti-communist, you know? Ooh, the businessman who... who fought bravely and valiantly against the fucking Russians, you know? And then what did they do? Was there something else that they ended up doing? Anyway, look, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck will happen, but... Yeah, Ukrainian special forces will no longer capture Russian artillerymen. The commander of the Ukrainian special forces has warned that it will kill captured Russian artillerymen in response to the brutal shelling of civilians and cities. I don't know why the fucking Kiev Independent wrote that, not realizing that that's, like, literally a fucking war crime. I know that they're, like, on obviously the side of uh, Ukraine, but that's a really that's silly thing to fucking report on. I, I would do my very best to hide that if I was, uh, you know, uh, trying to, to, you know, do propaganda for one side. It's nothing. In the beginning of the video, I recorded, that was actually me going in the morning to the ATM, the only ATM in the entire city of St. Petersburg that was on the map, like, ready for dollar withdrawal, right? So I went there, and there was, like, a line from, like, there was like there were, like, 50 people in the line, and before anybody even got to withdraw the funds, people were basically just told that there is no cash available at all. So, yeah, things are looking pretty grim. You know, you can't really withdraw dollars from any bank right now. Even withdrawing rubles is pretty hard as well. And, uh, I don't know, at this point, it really feels like a lot of the USD that I have is gonna just fucking disappear and <laughs> and it's not like I can really send it anywhere either because Swift is fucked so yeah pretty much anybody right now in Russia that's like kind of like me who's been making money uh, and paying taxes and everything who's been making money from abroad I guess or in foreign currencies all of these people are fucked so these are like IT engineers you know youtubers streamers everybody's fucked what can I fucking say I, I, it's over it's actually over and yeah since the ruble is pretty much crashing every single day all of my rubles savings you know are turning into nothing that's what i said you guys can call me hairy and bankrupt now and people already noticed this as well in like the span of three four days when russia got sanctioned and everything prices for tech products like whatever you know phones or something went up by like 50 60 percent same is happening right now to apartments uh, cars whatever i mean i cannot stress this anymore it is fucking over now one of the more interesting things as well about the current situation is that vladimir putin actually signed like an uh, executive order combating the uh, sanctions of the West. Actually, this is really an order that's meant to regulate the flow of like money out of Russia and just the overall flow of uh, foreign currency in Russia. Okay, also, it shows the most important parts in this order is that, according to it, now Russians are not allowed to uh, deposit money into their own foreign uh, bank accounts abroad. So, let's say you have a sum of money, like you have cash or whatever, you move to another country, and if you put that money in there, and if you're like a resident of Russia still, well, you're like breaking the law basically and another very interesting one that directly 
affects me is that according to this like new executive order has been signed every single person every single person that is making money from abroad basically in foreign currencies so that's basically again somebody like me who's getting paid from youtube or patreon or twitch streamers or it specialists you know who work in foreign companies whatever first of all these people including me have to in three days after the signing of this order which was on march 1st or february 28th they must convert 80 percent of all of the uh foreign currency earnings that they've had since the beginning of 2022 to rubles you get it? So if you were making money from the start of the year in like dollars or whatever, you cannot keep that money in dollars. You have to exchange in your bank 80% of that income from the start of the year to rubles. And second, every single new payment that you're going to be receiving now in dollars as a YouTuber, IT specialist, whatever, if you're getting money from abroad in a foreign currency like dollars, now when you receive those dollars, within three days of receiving the funds, you also have to sell 80% of those funds. I mean, not sell, but exchange 80% of that income two rubles <sighs> i'm speechless i am speechless now i clearly understand that is if he can get the money which a lot of western countries have already said no you're not getting the money they've completely shut off payment too i want you to see the human toll of this from the point of view of like a youtuber because you recognize you watch a lot of youtubers you probably watched this dude before Watch Twitch streamers, so you understand it a little bit better when it's like someone that you have a personal involvement with, and it's not just some random babushka in the middle of the fucking street being like, we're gonna die. Understand why this was done? Basically, actually, one of the hottest sanctions, one of the harshest sanctions that was announced on the Central Bank of Russia, which is like the main bank of Russia that actually regulates the use of currency and funds in Russia, and also what they do usually is that the bank of... A YouTuber is not a regular person, but it's one that you were probably going to feel more familiar with of russia it has well they had a pretty big uh like reserve of foreign currency like dollars and euros and uh, chinese yuan so basically they would use that currency in order to essentially just sell them and to buy rubles to sort of keep the rates up because right now obviously with the panic in the economy and everything a lot of people are changing their rubles to uh, to dollars but the supply of dollars is so low that uh in most banks like when you go to buy dollar on the app it says that you can buy a one dollar for like 150 rubles it's over it's fucking over holy shit <laughs> anyway so one of the hardest uh sanctions that the west imposed in russia is that actually the united states and the european union decided to seize uh basically all of the dollars that the central bank of russia has so essentially what this means is that the central bank of russia doesn't really have the foreign currency anymore to keep the ruble rates up from uh basically hyperinflating so essentially what they did with this like new law or order they basically don't have dollars so they're getting them from the citizens of russia in order i guess to make their own dollar fund bigger and to battle the devaluation of the ruble it's really smart isn't it so yeah i mean i did it but uh it's like yeah what can i fucking do at this point point? and you know guys even if i get a new bank to which i'm actually able to withdraw money from patreon and youtube you know the thoughts of having to convert all, all of that money that i'm getting into rubles instantly a currency that is super you know fluctuating right now you know it doesn't sound particularly fun to me so yeah i mean i understand guys that uh maybe this video seems might seem one-sided to you guys or whatever you guys might say that it's like insensitive to talk about this or whatever but this is what my life is like at the moment it's really weird it's almost surreal and it's frustrating and i just want to share it with you so yeah i really don't know what the further move is now what i did is that i actually uh opened up uh, crypto wallets for donations so if you guys want to donate some crypto to me be my guest i guess i mean again i'm not gonna pretend like i'm fucking starving over here not yet so yeah you might need that money more than me some other people might need it more than me but uh yeah if you're like a fucking crypto billionaire and if you're into it and if you somehow share my pain in the situation i guess so i'll put them suck it the fuck up eat some bread and go protest your dog shit country almost like this guy should have realized he's living in a shithole i want you to understand something hip to hop you're a monster and you will never, ever understand what it's like to not live in the United States of America. Because other countries can never do to America what we do to others. You would never consider that to be acceptable if it happened to you. I'm friends with the person that can't leave Kharkiv. Sorry, I don't care about this guy. I understand. I'm just showing you the other side of this. 
Like he has functionally no fucking power whatsoever. He already has stuck his neck out specifically by you're literally calling for sanctions on Israel. What about those people law? Dog, I've described my position on this a million times over. Israel will never get the kind of sanctions that we're talking about with respect to Russia. The number one sanctions that you can do on Israel is by pulling American support first and foremost. That would be enough to stop Israel's actions dead in its fucking tracks, which will never happen regardless. That's our adver that's not our foreign adversary, that's our ally. He literally is already sticking his neck out and and made another video uh, uh saying like Russians are against this invasion Russians don't find this invasion to be justifiable like he already made a fucking video them uh, like in the description and in the comments down below so yeah so uh, like what that that is significantly more powerful than anything you will ever do for the rest of your fucking life he's already sticking his head out he's, he's sticking his neck out at first you seem neutral on these sanctions but it seems like you want to repeal them what the fuck I want sanctions to come with a fucking, uh, uh, an amicable solution. I understand that we are all powerless in the face of Russian action. There's nothing we can do considering that Russia is a nuclear superpower and you're not going to get NATO involved because that would mean nuclear holocaust. The only thing you can try to do in this situation is at least like either sit back, fingers crossed, hope that like there's a revolution within Russia, I guess, of starving people that will then turn around and like try to kill Vladimir Putin. But you're talking about a country where like people don't even fucking, uh, you know, people don't even agree with Vladimir Putin, but there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. If anything, some of the sanctions I fear will like, you know, restore support and, and make it seem like the entire West is against them. Like that's something that Russia can propagandize alongside.